and there it is after I take it out of the uh, device I got a little deburring to do and you can see this is five degree angle here and here as well as the radius itself I prefer to do my deburring on something like this with a hone rather than a file and uh, that's what it looks like here before heat treating remember the cutting edge is only right there at the top this is a forming tool or a profile tool there's the five degree angle there and a little bit on the side so I actually would be able to cut even along here if I wanted to or a little bit along the side when I come in uh, to put the radius on the end of a rod. It'll be a half inch rod, quarter inch radius. Now I'm going to heat treat this off camera. I've just finished heat treating. I've hardened and tempered it. This is the back side and I had brightened that up so that the blue would show as I uh, tempered it and that blue is uh, 6 or 650 degrees so now this has been uh, hardened and tempered and is ready to mount in the lathe and we'll try cutting with it I'm set up in the Logan lathe now I notice that the tool is held in the uh, Alors quick change type holder and it's squared up perfectly with the chuck which is also squaring it up with the work I find that these work better just slightly below center so there's less chatter and there's often going to be chatter here on a forming tool because you're taking off a lot of material at once do you recall that I cut the side and the end of the tool at five degrees so that I could use it as a tool and here's just a brief demo of that notice that I am able to face with it also on the end here I could if I wanted to turn down just a little bit because that is a cutting edge the carriage should be brought up against the work here so that uh, you will truly clean up the entire end of the work this way and then I'm locking the carriage and then feeding straight in with the cross feeds chatter going there now you don't want to go in too deep or you will leave a little bit of a step and there we are a nice hemisphere now if there's a little wobble there it's because the chuck uh, is slightly out of uh, whack as and the, the work may be slightly bent as well and that's why you see the, a little bit of that wobble. Now we have half inch brass which will give us a quarter inch radius. And that cuts a little bit better than the aluminum for some reason and last but not least we have cold roll steel half inch diameter Just a little chatter on that. And there they are. Aluminum, brass, mild steel. Now just one warning here. 
the larger you make the radius, the more is going to tend to chatter because you're cutting, uh, when you get down to the uh, final size, over quite a large uh, distance here rather than at one point and that tends to cause chatter. And that's it for that method of turning a radius. Here are some radius gauges in their various forms. Uh, for the larger sizes, they're individual pieces. For instance, uh, this is a uh, 5 sixteenths and you got uh, 5 sixteenths radius here, 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 and here. So they're pretty universal. But for the smaller sizes, they're going to look something like this, like a pocket knife, or like feeler gauges, and each one is marked as to what uh, uh, radius that it is. These are metric. Now here's a set of sterret uh, radius gauges, and here's the quarter inch at the 250 thousandths, and that is what we were doing here. And you can always check your work with these. Also, check the, uh, the tooling. And we know that's going to be correct because I used a half inch end mill that I measured before I started and it was accurate. But these are radius gauges for checking the work. And the final method I'm going to show you of producing or turning a radius is with a ball turning attachment. And I will put a radius on the end of one inch Delrin stock. That's a type of plastic that machines very well. This does not show up real well in the video because of, of the glare, but I'm going to use uh, this white uh, Delrin. And uh, let's go on over to the Atlas lathe where I have already set up the ball turning attachment. This is a homemade ball turning attachment. I did not make it. Uh, it is capable of turning a full ball or a ball on the end of a, of a stem you can't produce a totally free-form ball like a ball bearing because there has to be some way to hang on to it. But in this video I'm just going to show you how to make a radius with it and in the next video I will actually turn a ball. So we'll set that aside and this is again one inch uh, Delrin and I have already set this up for the correct radius so that's a half inch radius and it takes a lot of explanation to set this up and this video has already run way too long so I'm not talking about the setup at all in this video just showing you how I will use it to uh, to put that uh, radius on the end of the stock. The tool has already been set and it's simply uh, like a universal turning tool like this so it will turn from uh, both directions but it's quarter inch high speed steel and all I'm going to do is move this lever back and forth to form the radius. But I must not come any more than perpendicular to the work with the tool or I will start to make a ball. I've already set this on center and uh, we're ready to go. And here we go. After each time I swing the tool I will be advancing the uh, cross feed uh, about a quarter turn. The corner is starting to round. I can actually cut going either way, but I get a better finish coming out. tool must never come past perpendicular or I'll start to cut a ball. And that's all there is to it. I did have the carriage locked so I'm backing that out of the way.
And there's the finished radius. It's a half inch radius. I put the work back in the three jaw chuck and ran a marker over it as it was rotating and it shows up so much better here in the video. And then using a, a radius gauge which is marked one half inch you can see that we are right on. And that's the third method of how to turn a radius. From time to time you may need to uh, machine an internal radius or a concave uh, uh, radius and in order to do that the easiest way would be to use a ball end mill and this is a ball end mill they're simply uh, a half round uh, end mills and they're available in virtually any size and uh, we'll just feed them in like we would a drill bit. These ball end mills are available from virtually any machine shop uh, supplier and uh, at a rather modest cost. They're a little more expensive than regular ones but they're not really outrageous and they come in any size from very small up to uh, uh, relatively large. This is about a three-quarter and I believe they come larger than that. Now these all have two flutes and you should use a two fluter because it can cut right to the center whereas if you get a hold of one of these multi flute four flute or more they do not cut in the very center so this would not be suitable for what we're doing this is the closing lathe and I have three quarter inch aluminum in the three jaw chuck and that's a, a half inch ball end mill now depending on uh, how accurate you need to be on this, if you want to go in exactly the radius, which will be 250 thousandths, this is a half inch ball end mill, it will give you a quarter inch radius, but we want to feed in uh, exactly 250 thousandths, and that's not always uh, easy to do on some lathes, depending on uh, uh, what type of setup you have, but certainly the fractional uh, index on the quill here isn't all that accurate for in terms of thousands. Some of you will have a collar right here with graduations and that would be pretty darn good. But in my case I do not have that so I've just rigged up a dial indicator here and a stop for it. That's also a magnet that's on the chuck. And then I can very easily go in exactly 250 thousands and that's one full revolution on this big indicator. An eighth inch deep and there we are exactly 250,000. It's that simple to make an internal radius if you have a ball in there. This is the one I just machined. I put a little bit of a red layout die in there to try to reduce the glare and reflection but we're still getting quite a bit of that and uh, again that was done with a half inch ball end mill and that produced a quarter inch internal concave radius. Very simple to do, just need the right tool. And that concludes this video with the various samples that I did. Uh, the small uh, done with the uh, severance tool and uh, these three done with my homemade tool and this done with uh, a ball turning attachment and be sure and watch the next video as I show uh, in more detail how to use that ball turning attachment and be sure and watch my hundreds of other videos and subscribe to my channel. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.